Got to close out all of this stuff. Look at that. Unstable internet connection already. Excellent. Excellent. Love that. I'm just clicking all kinds of stuff I shouldn't be clicking on now. What am I doing? Pause this. Close this. Close that. Close that. All right, I think that's all I can do. Close that one, close that one. Close that one, close that one. How's everybody doing? Carolyn, hey. Chuck, good to see you again up in Spokane. Bob Almighty, hello there. The one person early today, heck yeah. We are starting early here too. Wasn't me. Thank you for the whale diving. Appreciate that. Roz, hello in Scotland. Ashley, good to see you. Gypsy Woman, hello. Chris, Skatey Patricia, Shanna Lee with the lightning bolts. Julie, hi there. Ash with the lightning bolts as well. Mel, good to see you. We'll get rid of my animation and my music there. So good to see everybody. I have a new setup now. Uh, and if you were on the YouTube live the other night, uh, you probably saw this too, but I now have my chat screen on a vertical monitor to my right here. So you'll see me look in a direction you've probably never seen me look before. Chuck with the ass cannot freaking emote there. Heck yeah. Tina, thank you so much for the big love. Joe, thank you for the cake. I appreciate that. Hey, hey, everybody. We are starting early today. Renee with the ass cannot down there too. We've got all kinds of members of the storm in here today, which is awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here. It is a different live we're starting early i don't know if you saw the story but uh we've got some thunder kiddo stuff going on this evening so we're starting a little bit earlier and you know what if this works out well maybe we'll start early from now on we'll see Ginny, thank you so much for sharing the live as a reminder the more you guys share our content the better it does and the more we can do so it's the circle of life only the circle of content channel lee smith subscribing to become a, a member of the storm for the very first time right off the rip here just minutes into the live Thank you so much. Welcome to the storm. We will get you added to that VIP group after the live here today. Nursey Deer's here. Uh, Chris G is here. Jenny is here. Everybody, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Before we fully dive in today, which we have, uh, we have a whole gamut of really good stories today that Tony Spark has prepared for us. He also did say if I uh, if I got through all these stories today, he's going to kick my ass. Were those the words? Would you say he said roughly, roughly that was it. Uh, his his normal thing is I'm taking my pen and I'm leaving. That's his threat daily. Myra Catalina subscribing and becoming a member of the storm for the very first time here as well. Thank you so much and welcome to the storm. We're at 132 of 150 already. Already. Somebody's starting the train already here. Penny's designs and accessories. First time in the live. Welcome. Good to see you here. Uh, yeah, yeah, just as a reminder, we are starting an hour earlier, so we're ending an hour earlier. We are 3 to 5 p.m. Central Time today instead of 4 to 6. Um, also, a couple quick announcements before we start diving into stories here. On the podcast, if you are a podcast listener, I screwed up. Apparently, I found out yesterday that last Wednesday I posted a duplicate. So I think I transposed numbers in my head because it was supposed to be the March 21st session that I pushed out, and I pushed out March 12th again. So that uh, came to our attention because someone was nice enough to message us and let us know. And um, I got the correct one pushed out last night. So there's a new one last night. And then, of course, today, the next new one went out. So if you're a podcast listener, you've got two new sets of content since last night to listen to. So sorry about that. Being human sucks real bad sometimes. I don't like it. Uh, Candy Thunders podcast. We didn't film last night. We were filming Thursday instead. So there is still time to submit questions that you have that you want us to answer in that podcast in the Dusty Thunder subreddit, which is the R forward slash Dusty Thunder. Uh, also, we have some fiction stories in the work in the works 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 uh, that are going to be YouTube and podcast content that are going to be like chill out and fall asleep to this stuff playlist content. So I'm excited about that, and that's something you guys have asked for for a long time, so there's that. As another reminder, we still have sticker packs available at dusty-thunder.com and at dustythunderswag.com. The code FRIENDSANDFANS25 is still valid through April 17th, where you can save 25%. And if you saw today's content, you will be excited to know we have a save or a protect the cake shirt on there now. 
We now have a protect the cake shirt as of like an hour ago. It is up there and uh, Candy Thunder commented on today's video. Hey, Sammy, baby, subscribing and becoming a member of the storm. Heck yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. We have a protect the cake shirt now. It's up there. Um, and if you use the friends and fans 25 code before April 17th or through April 17th, you could save 25% on it. Heck yeah. That's a, that's a good deal. Protect the kick. Uh, so, so now if you were on the YouTube live, not this past one, but the one before that's where all these cake stories were recorded. And apparently I was triggered and, um, and apparently I have very strong feelings about cake. I didn't know until we did that live, but, but you've seen the past few days the stories that came from that session and now you get it now you understand this cake conversation that's going on now so apparently i'm triggered and apparently we also have to do a uh, a video showing the dirt cake and how it's made and how magically delicious it is that's lucky charms isn't it magically delicious yeah anyway we have a protect the cake shirt now don't mess with dirt cake hell no you better not mess with dirt cake Luna, Luna subscribing and becoming a member of the storm for the very first time here as well. Thank you so much. Happy to see you here. We're at 133 of 150 now. <laughs> the, there were three stories about cake. How does that even happen? But it's it's a big deal. I have strong feelings. Let me catch up here real quick on some gifts that I need to acknowledge. Uh, Allie, thank you so much for the corn. Jenny for the pizza. Allie for the chilies. Lots of them. And even more chilies. Uh Tag, thank you so much for the white-eyed worsty and the pumpkin pie. <laughs> uh, and the finger heart there. Kim, thank you for, so much for the rose. Tag for the uh, for the turkey as well here. And for the uh, the tiny diny. <laughs> Christy, thank you for the rose. Sammy, Sammy's good to see you here. With Those custom emotes are great. Um, Gemma, thank you so much. Oh, would you be doing different colors and the tops on the website? So, yeah, if you go to DustyThunderSwag.com, there are actually like five different colors of shirt available for each one of those designs. We pretty much, I think there's a maximum number we can enable, but there is there are at least four for every every design that's on there. Heck yeah, Liz, you got to get that cake shirt. I, I've got to get one now too. Kaz, thank you so much for the lightning bolts. I appreciate that. Uh, tag, tag, thank you for the balloons as well. And uh, Hoodie, thank you so much for sharing the live. We appreciate that, guys. Sharing is caring, truthfully. Oh, and this uh, this came in a couple of days ago, so I had to wear it today, and it is surprisingly comfortable. This is from that spring shop at DustyThunderSwag.com. I like it. I'm 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 impressed by the com comfortableness, the comfort level. I don't know how to say it. Words are hard. All right, we're going to go ahead and dive into our very first story here. This one is a follower submission, and it is titled, Am I the Ask Cannot for Not Allowing My Mother-in-Law to See My Daughter, Her First Grandbaby? Mother-in-law right out of the gate here, man. Tony, does this story have a mother-in-law and a cake? Oh, he doesn't know. Uh, there might be. Okay, if we have a mother-in-law and a cake show up in the same story, I guess we did the other day, too. Lemon cake lady. I don't know if my heart can handle no, no cake in this one. Okay. Thank goodness. Y'all are going to have to put me in a cage at some point here. Am I the ask not for now for not allowing my mother-in-law to see my daughter, her first grandbaby for some context, my husband, male 25 and I female 24 have been together for four years and married for two. When we got married, we both decided to move in with his parents in another state. His dad had some health issues. So we wanted to be there to help nurse him back to health. Just a couple of months of living there, I found out I was pregnant, and we decided that it was best to move back to our home state where all of our friends and family are. Well, not all of your family. Because we made two big moves in one year, we were basically behind on tons of bills. I was so sick during my pregnancy, and I was basically in and out of the clinics every week because of some complications. I wasn't able to find a job because of that, so my husband was the sole provider. He was jumping from job to job just to make ends meet, doing DoorDash, shipped and working temp jobs. Also, we were living in my husband's family family's home, which his parents paid off already. I gave birth to my baby and my mother-in-law decided she wanted to be there for me during recovery and to see her first grandbaby. She stayed for one week so that I can focus on recovering. Before my mother-in-law left, she basically told us she wants to move out and gave us two months or wants us to move out and gave us two months. We won't be able to afford renting an apartment. 
She said because of this, because this is her house, she has a say on who lives there and who she wants, and she wants us out. Well, damn. We'll go ahead and get those things going right now. We were taken back by this, but I completely understand that she does own the home and had paid it off. However, I, I had just given birth and my husband is still catching up on her due bills. Months had gone by and we hadn't heard from her. And at this point, we had forgotten she wanted us out. We were so busy being first-time parents, navigating this world with a newborn, and my husband had finally just landed a stable job. Eight months later, my in-laws came back to visit and reminded us that we had exceeded our stay. We were already planning to move out by the fall this year. However, she's giving us two months only to move out and says that she's not kicking us out and we shouldn't be mad at her. What is she calling it? Evicting? Doesn't that mean the same thing? She's doing this for our own good, and somewhere during the conversation, she called us bad parents. There were a lot of unnecessary and very disrespectful things that were said to us, but mainly directed towards me, and I will not be including it here for now. She left to be with my husband's sister for the rest of her stay. She has been trying to call my husband and I to FaceTime our daughter, and we've completely ignored her, and it's been two months now since the last time they had seen or FaceTimed my daughter. I have blocked them from my social media from seeing any posts of my daughter. The only time they see her is if my husband's sister comes over to visit and FaceTimes my mother-in-law. I heard from my sister-in-law that my in-laws are coming back to visit soon. My husband and I don't plan on seeing them. We've moved out to stay with my sister temporarily until we can save enough to be on our own. So am I the asshole for cutting them off from seeing my daughter? Oh. I miss the days of very simple, clear-cut, yes, you're the asshole or no, you're not kind of situations. We've <laughs> seems like we've had nothing but complicated stories here lately. I say that, but but cake night was pretty easy. Okay, so let's backtrack a little bit here. The, the specific question is, am I the asshole for not allowing my mother-in-law to see my daughter, her first grandbaby? But there's quite a bit more context than that. Oh, we've got a lot of NTA, 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 rough one, agreed. There's so much more going on here. There absolutely is. Honestly, the kid sounds entitled. They just wanted extra income from renting the house. That's entirely possible. Hey, Daniela, good to see you over there in, in UK. Nursey says toxic AF. You know what? Uh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Shane. <laughs> Sending me all the cakes there. All the cakes. You're trying to trigger me right now, aren't you? I'm trying. Uh, Candy, you want a Dusty Thunder shirt like the one I have on, but with my face underneath it? We can try to make that happen. I will pass that note along. I'm sure sure Tony Sparks over here shaking his head no right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's that's funny. That's funny shit. Um, <laughs> Nitty, uh, good to see you in Belgium. Thank you for being here. Appreciate that. Just ordered a shirt, Becky. Heck yeah. Thank you so much for the uh, panda, Megan. Uh, okay, so this is tough because they've been together for four years, married for two. When they got married, they both decided to move in with his parents in another state because his dad had some health issues. Then they moved back. So his parents own this house, but mother-in-law wants them out and says it's for their own good. So... By the way, this is a follower submission, so OP, if you happen to be here in chat and want to raise your hand and let us know, uh, let us know. Your choice. It is hard to believe that it was forgotten that they wanted them out. But, but again, I mean, you get so caught up in just surviving, and sometimes surviving in life becomes all-consuming and really freaking difficult, and it sounds like that's where they were. I mean, if he was doing as many jobs as he physically could just to try to keep them afloat and she had some health issues that prevented her from working also had a baby then oh she was still pregnant here do, 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 do. gave birth to my baby okay yeah um took a week off so she could focus on recovering and then mother-in-law said she was giving them two months to be out <sighs> This is her son. Mother-in-law's son is is the father of the child here. If she if she was saying that it was for their own good, she had the her take on this whole situation is that is that 
you guys were being lazy. Like you just weren't doing enough to try to provide and to be solid parents for the baby. It doesn't sound like that's the case at all. So maybe there's some education that needs to happen to mother-in-law, but that's got to happen from her son, your husband, OP, because if she was directing some snarky comments at you, there's obviously some kind of picture that she has of you in her mind that, that she's not going to accept any of your words. She doesn't have that level of respect for you that is going to be required for you to be able to convey information and her trust and accept that. Let's hope she will with her son. And if her son can explain to her where you guys are at, maybe there can be some kind of understanding created here. That's the part that bugs me here is that she, she says she's doing it because she feels like it's the right thing to do for you. You guys took that as this is an absolutely unacceptable thing for you to do to us, not for us. And that's the reason that you're not allowing her to see your daughter. Now, the flip side of this coin is they let you stay in this house rent free for an extended period of time. So do you owe them? Should you be thankful to them now? Should you be grateful that they allowed you to have that amount of time? And maybe they're in a financial situation where they need to sell the house, where they need to rent the house just to be able to afford your husband's dad's health issues. That could be the case here. We don't really get into that. So that's, it's just a, it's really complicated. And there's a lot of possibilities all over the place here. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think here? Let me turn to chat because I'm, I'm not sure. The court would give them 10 days to move. You think two months is generous. Becky says there's more against the mother-in-law than OP to be honest in this story. You're correct. But this story is also from OP's point of view. Obviously it's all we have. We don't know the mother-in-law's point of view here, but it sounds like she thinks she's doing this for a reason. Angela, thank you so much for subscribing for month two. We got a resub there. Heck yeah. Court gives them 30 days. Chris says that's her grandchild. Yeah. And that's either, either they, they financially can't help anymore. So there's a good reason for them doing what they're doing, but they should have been upfront about that. So that you OP, didn't take her saying I'm only giving you two months to get out of here um, as an insult or as them doing something that actually harms your position. Um, And that's the tough part here. I I don't know. Is it, is it entitlement to, to take this stance where someone has let you stay here for an extended amount of time. And then they give you a deadline when you need to be out um, and then ignore the good that was done by letting you stay there and just take this one the bad part of it and say, no, because of that, you did this to me. You can't, I'm not going to let you see my child. Is that entitlement or because it wasn't explained well by mother-in-law? Is it the position where she did do this to them? She did inflict some harm on their position here. And, and in doing so is putting her grandchild in a position that, that is more difficult and doesn't have to be like, she's trying to teach a hard lesson here, but, is it worth putting your grandchild in in a less fortunate position to do that? Unless you have a really good financial reason to do it where they can't, they just can't help anymore. They're using the child to manipulate her, Liz. Who's using the child? The OP is or the grand or the grandparents are. Honestly, this feels like an everyone sucks here. To what level? I'm not completely clear on because because there are so many variables that I don't think we have a really good beat on. So I, I'm hesitant to to put anyone on the ask on scale here. But yeah, using using a child as a weapon, um, I'm never going to agree with. I don't know that that's the case here. I don't know that that's what you're doing, OP. But but with the facts that we have right now or the facts, the with the worldview that you've given us here of this situation it definitely feels like we're missing more, but it's enough for us to say everybody sucks here. And I do think that if you, if your husband takes the, takes the time and the effort to do some communication with his parents to try to figure out what in the hell's going on, what's the motivating reason for them wanting you guys to leave? Is it a financial thing? Do they really think that they're trying to do you a favor by teaching you a lesson here? Do they understand how hard he's been working? Do they understand why you can't work right now? Do they understand all these things? Because if they don't, and there isn't a financial reason for doing it, then they have done you harm without knowing it. 
and maybe you can remedy that situation, but you do have to communicate through it. Not you, your husband, because if she's been snarky to you specifically, if she's targeted some, some insults at you, then she's not going to be ready to accept your words, but everyone sucks here. That's where I'm at. Quick summary is, oh, well, let's see if we can give you the 30 second version here. Um, the question was, am I the astronaut for not allowing my mother-in-law to see my daughter, her first grandbaby? What it came down to was, um, OP husband, OP and husband, OP was pregnant at the time. They made a couple of big moves, one to go help take care of, of his dad. Then they found out she was pregnant. So they moved back, stayed in his family home, which his parents owned and was paid off. So they stayed there without paying rent for, for an extended period of time, like eight months, it sounds like. And, um, his mom came back and said that she was giving them basically two months to find somewhere else to stay and said that she was doing it for them. She was doing them a favor basically by teaching them a lesson and forcing them to leave the nest in no uncertain terms there. So in turn, uh, OP has taken that as, you know, you're, you're doing us harm by doing this. So not allowing mother-in-law to see or FaceTime her first grandbaby, OP's child. The even the 30 second version is complicated. I don't know. It just sounds like everybody, everybody sucks here. Why not just ask them to pay rent, Sandra? That's a very good point. Um, they, they could have done that unless they needed to sell it. Or if they didn't think that they would be able to pay rent or the level of rent that they were going to need from that house, then, then they just wouldn't ask. Everyone's an ass except that baby. Amber says, Bleach the kids. Thank you so much for sharing the live. Appreciate that. Renee saying ask on four here, given the, uh, given the new ask on four emotes. I don't even know that that's what they're called. I have gray in my beard. I don't know those things. I'm, I'm not hip. I'm hip. I'm cool. Daka, 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 daka. Ah, ah. Isn't that the Dr. Evil thing? Were they ever supposed to pay rent, Nursey? It doesn't sound like it. Um, it sounds at least not that we know of. So eight months later, they had come back and, and reminded them that they had exceeded the stay. So if it was two months plus eight months, I mean, you, it's could have been like a year. Anyway, it's in my book, it's an everyone sucks here. There's got to be a lot more going on, but I don't think you're going to find out and have an understanding there unless your husband takes the effort to communicate with him. <laughs> ducka, 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 ducka. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> One million dollars. Uh, sir, that's not a large amount of money anymore. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and move into the next one. In case you are just joining and you missed these announcements earlier, just to run through them real quick. Um, if you're a podcast listener, I screwed up and I... I didn't publish the right one last Wednesday. So last night I fixed that. And then today a new one came out. So there are two new episodes to listen two new compilations to listen to on the podcast. And also we're filming with candy thunder on Thursday. So if you have questions you want us to answer, post them on the dusty thunder subreddit. And also we did make a protect the cake shirt. It is at dusty And the code friends and fans 25. And that's the ampersand, the symbol for and Friends and fans 25 to save 25% through April 17th. That is a code from spring. Uh, so thank you so much spring for giving us access to that, to pass along to you guys. That code is good through April 17th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You ready to dive into the next one here? Hey, Caroline. Good to see you here. Cake. If I wouldn't get in trouble, I would, I would change my intro song to something from the band cake. For at least a little while. I don't think we can afford that amount of trouble. Moose, thank you so much for sharing. Appreciate that. Chelsea, thank you for the lightning bolts. Appreciate that very much. PJ, thank you so much for the 30 lightning bolts there. Bets Lou, thank you for the cake. Appreciate that. PJ, for the turkey. Tucker the turkey. Nice. And Caroline for the lightning bolts there as well. Thank you so much. Carmen, thank you so much for loving the videos. You're in South Africa. That is awesome. Andrea is in UK. Very cool. PJ with the ice cream cones and Madre with the roses there. Thank you. TikTok Sam's in Scotland. 
it is so cool to see people show up. I mean, in comments on normal posts from everywhere, but specifically in lives for everybody. We have so many people from the other side of the world from us jumping in on a live, which is just crazy cool. Thank you so much for jumping in and showing us that you love this. It's awesome. New Zealand, Eland, Eland, England. Good gravy. Alaska, we've got people from everywhere up in here. South Dakota, Wales, holy crap. <laughs> Short skirt and a long jacket. Heck yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and dive into our next one here. Oh, heck, we've got Mississippi. We've got Texas. <laughs> Bella says sadly from Texas. Don't say sadly. should be proud of that shit. Space Burb is in Germany. Hamburg, Las Rivas, awesome. Naomi's in Sutherland, UK. Tigeko in Germany. PJ's in Indiana. Vronth from Pennsylvania. First time watching live? Welcome. Banana Car's in Belgium. Oh, it's moving too fast now. I can't keep up. Can't do it. Can't keep up. Even with this giant monitor. <laughs> Candy Thunder is in the chat, everybody. And she she's from Missouri. Give everybody, <laughs> give Candy Thunder a wave and some lightning bolts here. Show some love, her direction. Uh, she is... Of course, as you guys know, the the driving force behind all of this. And she, along with Tony Spark, pick out all the stories that we end up reading. And their Thunder and Spark project, it feels like it's getting closer and closer to actually happening. A Thunder and Spark podcast that that I, I may be a, like a guest on sometimes, but it's going to be the them show. They're going to rock it out. Then, then you'll just see the two of them fighting for the spotlight, right? You're going to fight Candy Thunder for the spotlight? No. You guys are going to share it equally. <laughs> Ninde, you listening, uh, listening while you play a game? Heck yeah. You know, it's really surprising that a lot of people listen to our content while doing something else. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the audio versions, but... Um, listening while driving or doing chores or, or doing while working, doing all kinds of stuff. It's cool. It's very cool. It allows me to be a part of your life without having to have your undivided attention. And I like that. I'm a multitasker as well. All right. Our next story here is from the AITA subreddit and it is, am I the ass cannot for refusing to pay for my gender reveal cupcakes? Damn it. It's a form of cake. Tony. PJ, subscribing for the first time and becoming a member of the storm. Thank you so much. Welcome. Welcome to the storm. <laughs> Tony Sparks says he woke up this morning and thought of all sorts of segments for the show. Look at this. It's just taken off here. Don, thank you for the wave. Ash, you th- Ash thank you so much for the, uh, for the microphones there. Appreciate that. And for the lightning bolts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a cupcake story. It's a cupcake story. It's still cake. Still cake. Protect the cake. Sorry, I yelled. I may have to turn my volume down a little bit here. Woosa. If somebody harms a cake in this story, I swear it. I will lose my shit. All right. I, female 22, found out last week my, my first baby's gender. And it's a little girl. My family is excited that I decided to do a small gender reveal over Easter weekend. I had this plan for Saturday, so a few days before, I asked a small local business if she could please make 12 cupcakes with pink and blue icing on top and pink icing in the middle. She agreed and said they would be ready to collect Friday evening. The plan was to pick up the cakes on Friday. See, she even called them cakes. Invite friends and family over on Saturday and give some guests a cupcake, which would reveal the gender. I only invited a few guests as my apartment is fairly small, and I didn't want to do a large gender reveal anyway. Just something cute and fun. Plus, everyone loves cupcakes. So Friday evening came. The small business owner, Claire, gave me her address to collect the cakes from. She said they would cost 25 pounds, and they are ready to collect whenever. I drove to her apartment and knocked on the door. She greeted me there with a box of cupcakes, and they looked amazing. They were exactly how I imagined them and thanked her for them. She gave me the box, but just as she did, her large pet dog came running up to me, barking, and jumped at me, knocking the box of cupcakes all over the floor. No! I heard that. 
Also, you included a story where cakes were harmed. Protect the cake. How did you even find this? Did you go seeking a story where a cake gets harmed? Dear God, what? Why are they doing this to me, guys? Why are they doing this to me? Claire apologized and shut the dog inside. He was still barking and jumping at the door. She said it's because he gets excited when people come and visit, but he wouldn't have hurt me as he's friendly. At this point, I didn't know the damage to the cupcakes as the box landed upside down. I picked it up and the cakes were ruined. The icing had smashed all over the box and some cakes had spilled out on the ground. Claire looked horrified as I understand she spent a few hours making them for me. She apologized and says she could remake them for free, but they wouldn't be ready until Sunday. I said, unfortunately, I'm expecting my guests tomorrow and Sunday is no good as I already had other plans. I explained I wouldn't be paying for these cupcakes as they would be inedible and ruined by her dog. We agreed payment upon receiving the goods and since I never received them, I wouldn't be paying. She said that I should still pay as she had to buy the ingredients for the cakes and the cost of eggs gone up. The cost of eggs have has gone up, meaning she would be out of pocket. I said if she had control of her dog, then they wouldn't have been dropped and I'm sorry, but again, I wouldn't be paying. I got in my car and left without the cupcakes. I still had guests attending on Sunday. I announced the gender in person rather than with some cupcakes, but it was still nice spending time with my friends and family. My family were all happy, but my sister-in-law said I should have still paid for the cupcakes as she accepted it was her fault and offered to remake them for me. I personally don't think I should have had to pay for them, but now I'm feeling slightly guilty as I understand it's a small business and a loss of profit would affect her a lot harder than a larger business. Am I the asshole? Um, I think if we look at this, yeah, we've got a lot of nope, not paying uh, a lot of that, a lot of control your dog. Um, <laughs> candy, candy, <laughs> candy, uh, CLKB says, since Tony said no to your face in the thunder shirt, maybe we should ask your wife, Candy. <laughs> oh, she's going straight to management, Tony. She's going straight to management. Um, if we were looking at this in legal terms, it, it was her apartment, but it's, if that's where she operates her small business from, you didn't, you were still on the premises when this happened and it was her dog that did it. So uh, legally you have, I don't think any obligation to pay for those. She did offer to remake them for you, but here's the funny part for me. She said that you should still pay for them because she would be out of pocket those ingredients. But if she was willing to remake them for free, she would be out of pocket the same amount. Right? She should have, the small business owner, Baker, found a way to remake them in time because this happened on her premises. It was her dog. There's, It's not OP's fault at all here. And if she had, if she had offered to remake them in time, OP would have accepted and gladly paid. But since she couldn't, there was nothing... There was there were no goods for OP to receive here. Nothing. And it wasn't through any fault of her own. It was entirely on the small business owner's fault. Well, her dog, but that's still she's responsible for for her dog on her premises. So she received OP received nothing. There's nothing to pay for here. I get it. Being a small business owner sucks sometimes. And it's because all of the risk is on you. And this is one of those risks where if something goes sideways and it happens, you get 100% of that risk or of that pain. You also get 100% of the reward. Well, minus overhead and everything else. You get it. But but that's the risk part of this is that if something happens, you get screwed. You feel that pain much more so than if you're if you're, you know, working for someone else. Like you you don't get paid unless your customers pay. And if something happens where you can't give them what you were supposed to give them, then guess what? You don't get paid even if you're out ingredients. So it sucks, but that's it. And if, if, if the small business owner, Baker lady wanted to be paid, I think she should have found a way to make the product in time so that she was still giving her what she needed and what she agreed upon. Oy. Um, at slammy original. Oh, what does OP mean? Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. Send the baker a protect the cake shirt. (laughs) 
Uh, should we come up with a dog size for that shirt? That would be good. That would be good. Yeah, she has to take the loss. Um, she should have found a different way to remedy the situation. And if she is, if this is a habit of delivering product at her residence, she's got to find a way to, to put the dog away whenever that happens. Or, or better yet, if this is a problem, which it obviously is, maybe she starts delivering the goods instead of asking people to come to her apartment to pick them up or find a neutral site to hand off somewhere where the dog isn't. That's all it comes down to. So OP, not the asshole at all. Where would we put Baker lady in this situation? Let's bring up the scale here. Bring up the scare. And, and also I think it was Sarah and waffles that pointed out to us that, uh, <clears throat> ooh, don't know what was going on there. Sorry. That at one point in time, or when we had the scale up previously, the, um, uh, Definition for Ask Call One was being covered up by the the profile uh, profile picture, and hopefully it's not now. Hopefully we got that fixed. I shrunk it down a little bit to try to remedy that. Okay, Op Baker lady, where's she at on here for saying that she should have paid for it? Could have done it differently. Should have done it differently. Definitely shouldn't have done that. Or you're a terrible human. Thoughts here. We got Ask On Threes popping up all over the place. Yeah. It's really easy to tell what you guys think now because those custom emotes have the colored planets which show up. We've got some twos as well. We've got some twos. All this cake talk man, you, making you want to bake your special apple banana cake. Oh, that sounds good. Apple banana sounds really good. I mean, I'll take dirt cake over anything, but she could have just defrosted them. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it... Baker lady could have taken those back. And if, if the actual cake filled part of it wasn't damaged, she could have defrosted them and refrosted them. Stephanie, thanks for the hand wave. Appreciate that. We've got four, three twos. We've got them all over the place here. Uh, Abby's asking what a dirt cake is. It's hard to explain. Uh, it's heaven pretty much. Uh, but I think we're going to end up doing a video over it because there's been so many people asking for the video on it or a description or a, uh, recipe. So I, I think we're definitely past four because it could have been done differently, but it definitely should have been done differently. Is it is a it is it that was hard. Is it a you definitely shouldn't have done that, or is it a you should have done it differently? I kind of feel like we're at a two because she definitely shouldn't had have asked her customer to still pay for something when she had nothing to deliver in time for the event. She had nothing to she had nothing to hand OP in the amount of time that she agreed to because of her dog. So I, I feel like I'm at a two here. You definitely shouldn't have done that, Baker Lady. Make it official. You get some blue cupcakes there. Blue planet shaped ask on two cupcakes. Protect the cake, by God. Oh my gosh. Protect the, just protect the cake. Protect the cake. Jack Daniels cake. Oh man. It's like <laughs> the conversation has been about cake for over a week now. And, uh, I can feel myself bloating. Just talking about it. Cake shirt in purple. Roll of my jet. Yes. Heck yeah. Nice. Yeah, we wanted to make some uh, some more brighter colors available there too. Summer Tom's, thank you so much for the cake. Appreciate that. I forgot. I forgot. There's a cake gift on here. <laughs> ah! Man, I hope there's not another cake one on here. We got to wash that cake story down with some uh, with another follower submission here. This follower submission is titled "Am I the Asconaut for Baby Trapping My Boyfriend?" We've heard a few baby trapping stories lately. I didn't know it was as common as it is, but apparently it is. Apologies in advance for the long post. I just need to get the full picture through. So you might be reading some seemingly unnecessary details, but I want to put you in my shoes. Uh, once again, this is a follower submission. So OP, if you're here and want to raise your hand, that's entirely up to you. Uh, chat may have some questions for you as we go. I, 39 female, and my boyfriend, 42 male, have been together on and off for 12 years. We started off casual as we both are very invested in our work lives and wanted to keep it a priority. Three years in, my boyfriend lost his youngest brother. 
He comes from a large family, having had to take care of his younger siblings, especially his little brother whom he practically raised. They were very close and would still make time to meet a few times a week over brunch. So the incident took a great toll on him, and he decided to quit his job and go to Europe for some distance. Excuse me. Protect the baby and the cake. There you go. Seven years ago, he got back in contact with me after two years absence and wanted to try again. We hit it off and I was still single and we surprisingly grew a lot closer during that time. He was a lot more willing to spend time together, dropping by my workplace occasionally, bringing me, bringing me home cooked meals when I'm working late as he was still taking time off work. However, seven years later, being much closer and in a serious relationship, we were still yet to go anywhere with it. We've talked about it before, and he's the type that doesn't believe in marriage, which is fine by me. I don't think a piece of paper would change anything about what we have. However, we talked about wanting kids in the future when we first started going serious, and we're both on the same page then. But a few years ago, but a few years after that, when I started seriously discussing that idea, he would shut it down, saying he can't risk losing me and brings up his brother and his wife's pregnancy, which admittedly, which admittedly was a very traumatic time for them. She had multiple complications throughout the throughout and wound up having to deliver a very premature baby because there was a risk that neither of them would make it if the pregnancy carried on. My boyfriend was there for his brother that entire time and saw how scary the whole situation was for them. So needless to say, I understand his reservations and I'm not looking forward to going through any of that myself, but we're not getting any younger. And who's to say that I have the same bad experience as her, even though he still refuses to take that risk. Late last year, as he was picking gifts for his nephew for Christmas before the holiday season, I brought up the subject and expectedly got the same answer. By the way, oh, sorry. But the way he was putting so much care in picking those gifts and asking about each one and how I think his nephew would react, I just couldn't take it anymore. So I decided I'd do it myself. Do watch yourself. I know how that sounds, but at this point, I was out of options. I knew how much he wanted a family together. That was always the plan before his brother and his wife became pregnant and that whole fiasco ensued. He said so himself. And the way he is with his nephew, he would make a wonderful father. He's amazing with kids. Adoption and surrogacy aren't for us cultural reasons, so instead I just opted to stop taking my pill. Oh no, she actually baby trapped him. Oh no. I found out I was pregnant a month ago and I've been keeping it a secret because I was more dreadful of his reaction the longer I waited. But it was getting worse with the morning sickness and today he woke up to me throwing up for the third time this week. So he started freaking out and wouldn't believe my stomach bug excuse. He insisted on taking me to see a doctor and I just spilled everything out. At first, he freaked out, then said we'll talk about it later after taking a moment to calm down, then said we're going to the doctors now. I kept assuring him that I was fine, how these were normal pregnancy things and nothing serious, but he wouldn't have it. It's been a couple of hours since the doctor's visit. He left after we got home, saying he needs to clear his head and said he'll be back with dinner later, so I shouldn't cook. I'm in my room at the moment, trying not to stress too much. The doctor assured us that everything's good and that me and the babies are well, but it's eating at me so much. On one hand, I'm overjoyed we're actually going to be parents to two beautiful babies, not one, but two. On the other hand, I keep feeling guilty over what I potentially put him through. So, am I the asshole? Oh my goodness. Seeing lots of uh, pink ass con wands on the screen here. Wait, yeah, those are ass con wands. They sure are. Look at that. There's lots of pink going on there. Oh, man. Uh, Crystal twins. Yeah. Someone enticing you into a relationship with the idea of said baby is asked on for sure. Uh, the promo code for the cake shirt was friends and family 25, but it's the ampersand and friends and family 25. I'd like to know more about the culture, cultural thing in regard to adoption. Yeah, um, unfortunately, they don't go into it anymore, but well, that was that. This is a follower submission also, so um, actual baby trapping. This is the first story where like baby trapping has been mentioned in several stories, and there was like an almost baby trapped, uh, but this is the first time where I've actually seen it like legit happen. <clears throat> Any type of trapping people is an ask on. Crystal dude is going to hopefully love the 30 ultrasounds. Uh, 
He's 43. There's no trap. She can raise the kids on her own if she needs to. But she did it because she said that she knew he wanted a family and he would be an amazing father. So, <clears throat> um, man, I don't, I don't think that makes it okay here, OP. Um, I think if you don't have, ex- if you, if you don't have an explicit green light in this situation, and also yeah, he's a boyfriend, you guys aren't married, so not that that has anything to do with the price of tea in China. But I think if you're if you're married, it's it's a little bit of a different conversation. Um, but but you guys are just dating, and you didn't have this explicit conversation where he said yes, let's try. You knowingly stopped t- taking your pills so that you could get pregnant, so that you could force him into a family. So, I mean, that's an ask on one thing to do. I don't think there's any way around that. Even though you feel like your motivations were noble behind it, it, it doesn't matter. You effectively lied to him, and now you're going to have a baby because you lied, and that. Level of deceit is potentially unforgivable. And he, man, you've put him in a really shitty situation here. And and his fears, his fears may be unfounded. And what he's been through and, and what he saw his brother go through is has him on high alert about everything. And that's a very painful way to go through life. But if you think that this is going to make that better, you're wrong. If he's already afraid of everything, guess what? When you have a baby, you become 10 times more terrified of everything because then it's, then then it's all, I have this tiny defenseless human out there in this terrible, dangerous world. Like I, man, um, it's, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. I, I don't think there's anything that we can say other than this was an ask on one move. Um, it was the paramount of deceit. I don't think there's any other way to, to say it. Uh, and, and you feel like you were doing the right thing because it's like you know him better than himself is kind of your approach here. You know that he really wants this family, even though he's he says he's too afraid to do it. I, I don't think there's anything that makes this okay. I don't think there's anything that, that can justify this at all. Let's go ahead and make it official here. And fly you all the way to ask on one. And, and I feel bad doing this because it's, <laughs> you've got enough going on right now. Like you, you're pregnant. You've, uh, you're going to have to navigate through this turbulent relationship now, but just be aware that, but forcing him into this, isn't going to make it better. You're going to have to work with him a lot and try to convince him to work on himself a lot about controlling his fears and not letting that not le- not letting that have complete rain up here because having a baby is is not going to make it better. It's going to make it much worse. And here pretty soon when your baby's born, you guys are going to be both fried, running in survival mode, and that's when you lose your filters and there's going to be a lot of things said in that time. So just prepare yourself. Prepare yourself and whatever whatever comes your way, you deserve it. Liz has a good point here. He needed to work. He needed all caps to work through his trauma first. And she took that from him. Yeah. It's a lot more than just forcing him into a family. The trauma part of this that he needs to work through before he can live a happy, not terrified of everything life. He now has to just take a blitz mode through or he doesn't. And you're about to experience a whole new chapter of this. That's heightened times a million whenever the baby comes. So why what about the baby though uh i mean hopefully hopefully this terrible play that op has put into motion here works and he and he takes this as a okay i i will do the the hard work now so that by the time the baby gets here i am more stable and less terrified that's going to be tough though because like i said once the baby gets there you're like oh shit i'm afraid of everything like it's just it's terrifying so um hopefully they're able to work their way through this worst case scenario op you may be raising this child without him and i hope that's not the case i hope it's not the case but 
you need to prepare yourself because what you've done here is is going to be tough. You can't remedy it. You're just going to have to get to a level of acceptance with it and hope that hope that the pendulum swings your direction on this. Oof. Children. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, they have two babies coming. Gosh dang. Ah, that's rough. Um, yeah, I mean, all the guilt that you're feeling, you should be feeling. And uh, I don't know that this is going to leave a scar on your relationship forever. I just hope that you guys get to a functional point. But just understand that those early days as first-time parents, especially when you have infants, it's it's not going to be easy. It's definitely not going to be easier anything. Oi. All right. So we've got smashed cupcakes. We've got actual baby trapping. Yeah, I can't imagine having twins. Oh, my gosh. Navy Thunder is, and I know it's because because we're older now. Like when you're when you're 20, 20 in your twenties, having a kid, like you have the energy to uh, to keep up with them. It's all mayhem still, but you know, at forty, it's way different. It is way different. Kids keep you young and make you really old at the same time. That's why my beard is almost all white now. Because we have five children. It's kind of like the presidency. Small business ownership and being a parent are kind of like the presidency. You just age at a uh, at an exponential rate. It's like you're you're aging at a normal pace and then you become a parent. And in two years, you look like you've aged 20 years. And then if you do that and become a small business owner at the same time, it's like in 10 years, you've aged 90. It's crazy. All right. We're going to jump into the next story here shortly. Oh, my gosh. Purple D had uh, twins at 33. I imagine that was crazy difficult. Kids keep you young as a load, Mary says. <laughs> oh, man. Kylie, thank you so much for the rose. Appreciate that. Um, why did I start early, Chunky Jick? We've got some kid, uh, some kiddo stuff tonight, some Thunder Kids stuff tonight. There's uh, an academic banquet that we've, we've got to go to. So we're, um, I have to wrap up by five. How do you submit an AITA story? Good question. Okay, there are a couple of different ways to do this, and I've actually recorded a video that we'll be penning at some point that is um, like a walking you through this step by step because there are a few different options. But uh, the first and best new way that we're trying to make this happen is to post it at the Dusty Thunder subreddit. You can post it directly there, um, and our team gets a notification and we get eyeballs on it. You can also Submit it using the submit a story form at dusty-thunder.com and that will go to the same team. And what we've ended up doing with that now, we're just getting the ball rolling on this, but some of those stories will be filtered over to that Dusty Thunder subreddit as well. So either way you go, it could end up at that subreddit. Um, But those are the two main ways to do it. Love only says my husband only calls when you're on live and I miss stories. I'm sorry. Um, Here's the cool part. Jesse, thank you for the rose, by the way. And Kylie, thank you for the rose. Thank you. The Rosa. Rosa, not Rose. Rosa. Chunky chick. Thank you so much. A hundred freaking lightning bolts. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carla, thank you for the lightning bolts as well. Um, I was going to say something and I've completely forgotten what it was going to be. I have completely forgotten. My brain is just gone. I saw Candy Thunder say something here. Just call cards. I missed it. I missed the comment. I'm sorry. Thunder children come first. That's right, Sarah and Waffles. This is Lexi. Lexi, thank you for the rose. Crystal, thank you for the cake. Appreciate that. Danielle, thank you so much for the rosas. Abby, Abby for the rose as well. Thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, they mentioned Lynn. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of me there, Lynn. They mentioned not being uh, available because their husband calls during the show. Yeah, that's that's funny shit. He probably knows. He's like, I know what she's doing right now. Boop. Oh, what I was going to say was if you miss a part of this, 
we have started taking these live streams and actually downloading them and uploading them to YouTube. So it'll probably be tomorrow before I have that posted. But um, if you did miss any part of this, you can go back and watch it on YouTube starting tomorrow. And we actually go through and put the chapter markers in there for which story starts when. So it's easy to click through. All right. We're going to dive into the next story here. Are we pacing okay, Tony? All right. If you gave me the, the this thing, I, I couldn't even see it now. Yeah, no, I got my big monitor in the way, so I can't, I can't see his signals to me. You did it on <laughs> I did. I did it on purpose. Don, thank you for the Rosa uh, Maricella. Thank you so much for the Rose. Don, for the Rose as well. Jesse, for the tiny diny. Appreciate that. Suzanne, with the 50 lightning bolts. Heck, heck yeah. Linda, thank you so much for sharing the live. Appreciate that. Cassie for the rose, Chip for the uh, big love. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Stacy with a hundred lightning bolts. Holy cow, you guys are freaking awesome. Don with a uh, Rosa again, and and Ariane with the panda. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. I know there was some uh, some new subscribers to the storm here as well, and I think I have missed those. Amy Ross joined, and Myra Catalina joined, becoming members of the Storm. Also, Shanna Lee Smith becoming a member of the Storm, too. Thank you guys so much. If there's another one on there that I missed, I'm so sorry. Um, it won't let me scroll up any further than that, but I will be able to see. Holy crap. Father Curtis was just staring at me between my two monitors underneath my light, and I could only see eyes, and it really just freaked me out. Um I will be able to see all of the new members after after I finish the live today. And tonight, I will get those invitations to the VIP group sent out to you there. Stacy, thank you so much for the superpower. Appreciate that. Nicole, thank you for the finger heart. You guys are awesome. Random with Rose. Thank you. All right. We're diving in. This is another. Oh, holy cow. I'm still scrolling on this page. I don't know what happened. Oh, that's no good. Fixing it. Fixing it. Fixing it. And I'm good to go. Okay. This one is from the AITA subreddit and is called, Am I the Askonaut for Liquidating My Daughter's College Fund to Keep Our Dream House? Oh, this doesn't sound complicated at all. It's fine. Linda and Giselle, thank you so much for sharing the live chips. Chip, thank you for the 50 ice cream cones. Y'all trying to fatten me up with this cake and ice cream. My goodness. I don't need any help in that department. If you could start start sending me things like um, like barbells and um supplements i don't know <laughs> thank you guys for sharing the live appreciate that all right this one starts off with i 50 female lost my husband four years ago i also have a 16 year old daughter my late husband left me everything and told me to trust his lawyer my husband had worked for 20 years as a doctor and did some minor investing so i inherited over seven figures a year later, I decided to list our home of 12 years and received an offer too good to refuse. With the inheritance as well and the influx of cash from selling the house, I decided to move my daughter and I to Malibu because we always dreamed of a home next to the beach, but my husband was exceptionally tight-fisted and called homes their money pits. We found a beautiful home by the sea. I never personally handled anything regarding buying a home before, so I did not anticipate all the extra costs beyond the sticker price. But my daughter was so excited, so I decided to go for it. My late husband's lawyer was furious at my decision, so I decided to stop taking his calls. I ended up signing with a money manager who said that we'd be passively earning 90% of what surgeons earn per year. But the money manager ended up taking, tanking a lot of our investments. I took the dwindling money out and made my own investments, which made it worse. And long story short, because all of that, I only have around 35 K available to me right now, not to mention our debts with the amount available to me. I am looking at only being able to pay one month of a mortgage and upkeep. And then I'm basically out of luck until my business gets clients. However, the place where we do have a significant amount of money is in the fund where my husband started for my daughter. With the money there, I could prevent our credit cards from being shut down and not have to worry about the mortgage for many more months. So I ended up liquidating my daughter's college fund. I told her about it today and she was furious and said she cannot believe all her dad's work is gone. She also said she won't be supporting me for retirement. Am I the asshole for trying to fix my mistakes and trying to keep our house? That's a misleading question. For trying to fix my mistakes and trying to keep our house. Oh, no. Okay, I should have done this a minute ago. I'll do it now. You know, when I first started reading this, 
I thought maybe, you know, maybe there's something that makes this not terrible. Maybe there's something that makes this not terrible. But <sighs> OP's husband's wishes here were for her to trust the lawyer. And she was making decisions that the lawyer did not agree with. So she immediately went the opposite direction of what her husband wanted her to do. Also, the husband had set aside the college fund. It wasn't OP who had created it. And if this were just a fund, if this were just, you know, an investment account or a savings account, and it didn't specifically say or or have a defined earmark for this is for our daughter's college fund, that would be a different story. But if it was specifically designated as the college fund, I don't think you should touch it. Too late for that because she did. She just liquidated it. It kind of seems like she just went on a massive spending spree here. Lovely boo. Thank you so much for subscribing and becoming a member of the storm. Heck yeah. Good to see you there. 139 of 150. Heck yeah. Um, yeah, what the hell? Um, in a very short amount of time, unraveled seven figures worth of money down to 35K. And 35K is only going to allow her to be able to pay one month of mortgage? Holy shit. Did they buy Tony Stark's house on Malibu Point? Are they on Point Doom? Like what? What kind of... What kind of place are we talking about? So I don't know how much was in the college fund, but but with the college fund, I, I seriously doubt that it's going to allow the allow her to continue down this path and to, to be sustainable. Like she's going to run out of money again. It's just going to be a little bit longer. And then daughter's going to have nothing, which sucks terribly. There were a lot of poor decisions that were made here. <sighs> And the last one was the worst one, the worst one liquidating the dollar, the daughter's college fund. I also think that there's this, this age thing. She was 16. If, if she were nine and there was going to be time to rebuild that, I'm not saying I agree with it, but there would at least be time to rebuild that. She's 16. There's no way you're going to be able to rebuild that by the time she needs it for college. So now she's screwed out of a college education because you wanted to keep a fancy house. OP. Yes. I think everyone, everyone is, is in agreement here that we are in ask on one territory. This was not just a, not just a, poor judgment. This was not just a bad decision. This was not just a string of bad decisions. This was a string of horrible decisions with the cherry on top of an absolute shit human decision. There's no way this should have been done. No way at all. And, and you're going to reach the same end point. Either way, you're going to go broke. You're going to lose this house. Now your daughter's also not going to have a college education. She couldn't support you in retirement, even if she wanted to now, because her options for where she's going to school, unless she's just a genius or, or has some kind of uh, sports scholarship are going to be severely limited at this point now. So congratulations. You screwed yourself and you screwed your daughter hard. And yeah, everything, everything that your husband worked for ending up translating, translating over to getting you seven figures when he passed is gone. Wow. Shit. Wow. Yeah. Lovely boo here. Lovely boo here says, get rid of the house. <sighs> I don't know how much equity they have in it. And that's the tough part. Um, I mean, you would hope that, that because of the amount that has been dwindled down, like, I mean, they have a mortgage. So, so we know that there's a lien on it. We don't know how much equity is in it. We don't know how much, they owe on it, but like, where the hell did the rest of the money go? Is there a Bentley parked in the driveway? Uh, there's a lot of this that I don't understand, but it, it sure seems like it's just been poor decision on top of poor decision on top of poor decision. And also, when you're making these poor decisions, you probably should consult someone else before hiring a money manager, like have a third party do an evaluation or something. Cutting off the attorney was probably the dumbest thing that could have been done at that point. And I'm sure that he would have prevented or helped prevent this college fund from disappearing. But she stopped taking his calls because she didn't like him disagreeing with her decisions. 
worked out well. Good job. Good job. Lynn, thank you so much for the love. You appreciate that. Uh, A Flower says, sell the house and buy something affordable. Surplus repairs. Surplus repairs the college fund. If there is a surplus. We don't know. Shanna Lee says, there has to be another... There has to have been other avenues to take before touching the college money. It's that, yeah. The money manager spent it. She said that the money manager tanked a lot of their investments. And it could have either been the money manager made poor decisions. It could have been market downturns. It could have been any number of things. But did the money manager squander? I, we don't know. Um, but her saying that he tanked it, says bad investments to me or market downturn, not he stole. Savina, good to see you there. Lynn, thank you so much for the chili. Appreciate that. Love only says spoiled, obviously. It's kind of looking that way. Shana Lee with the, uh, with the ask not and ask on one there. Heck yeah. The money manager is just off the hook. Well, if it was a market downturn or bad investments, then yeah. It doesn't sound like he stole anything. But you know what? If she had kept the lawyer in the loop, she could have prevented that in the first place. And also, if if he did steal something, she would know. Right now, she probably has no idea. And, you know, lady has seven figures. Makes a lot of bad money decisions. Hires her own money manager. What criteria did she use when hiring that money manager? He had a fancy office. He looks nice. You know, it's entirely possible that she got herself into a position where, where she did get swindled. And she is starting her own business. Yeah. Rugger did say that because she mentioned something about until her business gets clients. We don't know what kind of business that is either, but man, tough. Very, very tough. She definitely should have listened to the lawyer. Probably just smelled good, Stacy. That <laughs> Yeah. I mean, what else matters, really? Especially when it comes to trusting someone with your money. He smells nice. Oh, I like the way he smells. So I know he's going to be good with money. <laughs> Candy Thunder let me know the other day that someone said my, my Moira sounded like the love child of Moira and Forrest Gump. And now I can't unhear it. Can't unhear it. Every time, every time I start talking in it now, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> it's that's Moira and Forrest Gump. How do I remove Forrest Gump from that? I'm gonna have to do some work on that. Now I'm afraid to do Moira. Y'all got in my head. Financial guy two told her what she wanted to hear. Uh yeah, absolutely. You hear it? I know. I can't see. It's a problem. I've got to work on my Moira to deforest it now. Damn it. First cake and now this is nothing sacred. Nothing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to have to do some some serious woodshed time on this, guys, before I bring Moira back out. <laughs> Moira and Sally Field. Oh, no. <laughs> I've got to work on it. I've got to improve it now. I, I can't do it. <laughs> oh, no. Love only. No. <laughs> Says life is like a slice of cake. Now I can't even attempt to do that in a Mo- in a Forrest Gump voice because it'll come out as Moira. Like it's, it's I'm very in my head about this right now. Don't you dare change it, Claudia says. It is uh it is unique. We could say that. Cindy in Texas, good to see you. <laughs> Rip Moira, Tori. <laughs> oh man, I don't I don't know. I'm gonna be staring in the mirror for hours now, doing that voice, trying to figure out what in the hell it is. What in that? Maybe it's just because because of my natural voice timber. When I try to do the Moira voice, it just has that natural Moira or forest tone. See, they're becoming a one in my head already. I can't even differentiate them. This is, this is really disturbing. My whole world has been shattered here. Kim, you don't hear it. Good. Denise, good to see you there. You'll have to binge Shit's Creek now to study. Uh, cool. Kelly. Yeah, Absolutely. You know, it's been a few months since we finished it for the 13th time. So, yeah, it's probably about time to spool that back up. But we did start watching Designated Survivor for the first time. And I know it's got three seasons to it. So, we've got a good amount to go through. And so far, digging it. (laughs) 
No, Jarby. Jarby's like, oh, no, what have you done to Moira? Uh, somebody said that my Moira sounded like a love child between Moira and Forrest Gump. And now I can't unhear it. So I've got to fix Moira or attempt to accept it somehow. It's it's very it's planted seeds of doubt in my head for sure. Amy Bella, I, uh, I, I'm sorry. Amy, thank you so much for sharing the live. Appreciate that. Uh, 10 after four, my world here, uh, here in Missouri. We're okay, but I do need to get to the next story here. Thank you for keeping me on track. This one is a follower submission and it is titled, am I the astronaut for not inviting my brother-in-law to our gender reveal and baby shower backstory about eight months ago, my husband 30 male and I 30 female got married. Wedding planning was going fine until a month before the wedding. RSVPs were already all in and items had been purchased and ordered. I texted mother-in-law a photo of our seating chart. I was super excited and thought it looked really cute and wanted to show it off to her. Well, she aggressively asked asked why her oldest son's brother-in-law, 35 male, plus one wasn't on the list. I explained that we had limited our number of guests and wanted to have just our close family and friends and only those that are married or in serious relationships had plus ones. I explained that I didn't realize he was even in a relationship. She explained brother-in-law had been seeing a girl for about a month, but it was nothing serious. None of us had even met her, and we didn't even know her name. I didn't see what the big deal was about some stranger not being invited to my wedding, not my mother-in-law's wedding. We also had a wedding website where guests could RSVP, and brother-in-law would have known that there was no plus one if he would have actually RSVP'd. We also had an FAQ section on our website to avoid any awkward conversations about plus ones, which apparently only works if people use it. Well, mother-in-law went off on me about how, in this area, it's expected to have a plus one. I'm going to, I'm going to have to like, I'm going to need therapy to, to remove this Forrest Gump thing and how her father-in-law asked their coworkers and they said, it's normal to have a plus one for every guest. Oh, well, trust your coworkers. Of course. It made me feel like an outsider because I'm not originally from the area and all my family would be traveling far to attend the wedding. She demanded brother-in-law get a plus one. Demanded? But my husband and I stood our ground and said, no, it's too late. RSVPs were due a month ago. I was already upset with mother-in-law from months earlier for not coming to my bridal shower. My sister and bridesmaids were planning my bridal shower. Mother-in-law made such a fuss over it because... It because it was down by my family's house, which I wanted since it made more sense for me to drive to them. It's only two hours away. No one from my husband's side even bothered to show up to it and never told my sister they weren't going. My sister and bridesmaids spent a lot of money on the shower and put a lot of effort into it for a bunch of them to not show up. We'll do this again. Oh, they froze. Look at that. We have frozen flags here, folks. My goodness. There's also been a lot of contention between myself and mother-in-law over me and my husband not going to visit them very often. Mind you, we live on the same property about 200 yards away. Mother-in-law thinks I'm purposely keeping my husband from her. It's his choice not to go over there and hang out. Husband and I have very difficult work schedules and we both work night shift. We work holidays and weekends and I work 12-hour shifts so it's hard to make any plans on my work days. And mother-in-law doesn't understand that when she plans events for noon, which would be in the middle of our sleep time, on our weekends fast forward to the wedding brother-in-law didn't even bother to show up to the wedding mother-in-law said he already made other plans for that day that was hurtful to not attend your own brother's wedding but my husband expected nothing less from his own brother do this again i'm gonna break that red flag button background on brother-in-law my husband has never been close to his brother and his brother is the black sheep of the family he's 35 years old still living with his parents oh so 200 yards away from you guys as well and has zero responsibilities. His mom cooks and cleans for him, and he he doesn't have to pay rent or do anything. He goes out drinking every weekend and has previously stolen items from the family to pawn off for drinking money. He also doesn't shower regularly and smells really bad. Fast forward to now. We are pregnant, excited, and due later this year. We are planning a gender reveal in about a month, and my husband and I are equally agreed My husband and I equally agreed we are not inviting brother-in-law to the gender reveal party. My sister and mom are planning my baby shower and wanted a guest list. I left brother-in-law off of it. We didn't tell mother-in-law because we know she will just throw a fit. My husband and I equally agree that we do not want brother-in-law in in our children's life as he's not a good influence and because of his hygiene. 
We have given brother-in-law so many chances in the past to mature and to be a part of our lives, but whenever we have family gatherings, he shows up drunk or just eats really quick while playing on his phone and then leaves without saying much to anyone. When we told him we were pregnant, he just shrugged and walk away, walked away like he didn't care. So am I the asshole for not inviting my brother-in-law to the gender reveal and baby shower? And also for not wanting him in our future children's life and for not telling mother-in-law, brother-in-law isn't invited. <laughs> okay. Um, I immensely appreciate how prepared this OP was and essentially has like a checklist of, am I an asshole for this? 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 Follower submission, by the way, OP, if you're here, let us know. I applaud you. Well-written, well-organized. You're absolutely not the asshole for this at all. Um, if I were in your shoes, I would be trying to find a place to live that's not 200 yards away from your mother-in-law. That's bound to cause problems, right? Chat, right? Lynn, thank you for the cat paws. Appreciate that. Uh, in-laws are ask on one, Chuck says. Where are the in-laws? Well, mother-in-law. Let's say mother-in-law. Andy Shear, you missed the story? Oh, man, that this would be tough to... This would be tough to backtrack. Um, okay, I'll give you the 30-second version. OP and husband were getting married. Uh, had brother-in-law invited, but not his plus one. Mother-in-law threw a fit about that. Fast forward a bunch of years. Um, OP and her husband are expecting. Didn't invite brother-in-law to the gender reveal because they knew mother-in-law would throw a fit about it. Um, brother-in-law lives with his parents still. So mother-in-law and, um, and OP and her husband live on the same piece of property as mother-in-law and father-in-law about 200 yards for them. So that's where we're at. Shelly, Shelly, uh, are you living on the same property as your, as your in-laws there? Nikki, thank you for the Rosa. Appreciate that. Don lightning bolt. Heck yeah. I, I, t- Moira's not going anywhere, Tanya. She's not going anywhere. Don't worry. Don't worry. She's not going anywhere. Cloud bread. Thank you so much, Gloria, for the cloud bread. Appreciate that. And Tanya for the rose. It was the rose because I said I wasn't. I wasn't getting rid of her. She's not going away. I just have to. Uh, I have to get forced gump out of my head. So uh, yeah, obviously Op isn't isn't an asshole here. I think you're going to have a really hard time, though, OP, because of the proximity. I think proximity is one of the biggest problems that you have right now. Um, I'm really surprised, though, with you living on the same piece of property 200 yards away, that mother-in-law isn't just showing up more often. I know she's bitching about you guys not making time to see her, and she plans things and doesn't understand your night shift crazy work schedule. I'm really surprised she's not just showing up. Surprised during your day sleeps, she's not like just walking into your bedroom and standing over you like. Are you ready for tea? I've made lunch. But then again, she's too she's too busy taking care of brother-in-law, who's uh, apparently a giant man baby who does nothing but drink bottles with nipples on them, but they're full of Jack Daniels. Can they move to the beach house in Malibu from the previous story? Yes, that would be ideal. That would, I'm pretty sure it's going to be available soon. Chunky Chick, you found weights. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's what I need. I need that. I need that to balance out the cake. Thank you for those. Thank you. Thank you. I come creepy. Mother-in-laws get a British accent. It's, it's Moira Rose uh, from Schitt's Creek. I know it's a little Forrest Gumpy right now, but I'll get rid of that. I'm just, I'm in a funk. I'm in a funk. <laughs> People got in my head. 100K likes? Heck yeah. Candy, thank you so much for the heads up on that. Appreciate that. And we're at uh, 1,200 people right now. Cool. Heck yeah. Uh, so this one, yeah, this one OP is not the asshole at all for. Mother-in-law belongs where? She initially pitched a bitch fit about brother-in-law not getting his plus one. He'd only been dating this chick for a month, but was super snarky about it and started polling other people and she demanded it in the first place. So you demand anything of a bride for her wedding. You're automatically on the ask on scale, but where, where are you? Where are you? Mother-in-law. She definitely shouldn't have done that. I feel comfortable saying that. So at least an ask on two, is she a one? 
Nikki, thank you so much for subscribing and becoming a first time storm member. Welcome. Welcome to the circus. Saying two. We've got ask on twos. Uh, Renee says ask on one. Doing a drive-by. I have to get back to your thesis. Aaron, understood. This will be available on YouTube later. We're taking all the recordings from these lives and moving them over to, to YouTube day after. So it'll be there. Channel A says mother-in-law is an ask on one. Is she a terrible human? Okay, remember, she's got a giant man-child that she's taking care of. So brother-in-law, when she's bitching about him not getting his plus one, it was because he's still living with her. Um, he's 35 and he basically, or she has to do everything for him. Now, how she approached that is definitely a shit thing to do and demanding something of a bride on her wedding day or for her wedding is probably an ask on one move two for sure. Maybe one, maybe Cosmo. Thank you for the taco mad drummer. Thank you so much for the tiny diny. Appreciate that. I'm going to, I'm going to err on the side of caution here a little bit and, uh, and say, where did two? potentially a one she could easily get to a one if with the proximity she started showing up in their bedroom or in their house could easily be a one i'm also worried and this is a follower submission op so if you're here let us know i'm also worried that mother-in-law and father-in-law own the house that op and her husband are living in and if they do you're positioning yourself to be under their thumb. And the quicker you can get rid of that, the better. Crash Cart Ronnie, subscriber for month three. Heck yeah, glad to still have you as a member of the storm there. Thank you. Katie with the football helmet and Susie with the taco. Thank you guys so much. One, because it seems likely she would try to force them to allow Uncle Manchild around the baby. You have a good point there. You do have a good point there. She could easily get to a one. And if she does force try to force that, then yes, I would agree. She hasn't gotten there yet. But they haven't even talked about it. Tori subscribing as a member of the storm for the very first time. Welcome. Welcome to the storm. Appreciate that. Sky, thank you for sharing the live. Appreciate that too. Thank you. Thank you. Z's in Texas. Hey, good to see you. Thank you for being here. Dustin, thank you so much for the pizza. Good name. Dustin with an A. It's cool. I haven't seen it like that. Nikki, thanks for the cake. Commando, thank you for the lightning bolts. Appreciate that. And Amanda. Amanda Sherwin Music, resubbing for month two there. Awesome. We're at 143 and 150 right now. Heck yeah. Let me retouch these uh, announcements that we had real quick. The last few stories that we have are a little bit shorter. Tony Spark has reminded me or let me know. So let me run through those uh, those pre-stream announcements that we had real quick. After I get some jot. Mm. I have found... That if I start drinking my jock coffee like an hour before the stream starts, I'm way more jazzed. Okay, um, so just running through these few points real quick, and then we'll jump into our home stretch of three stories. Uh, the podcast, if you are a podcast listener, I apparently screwed up on and published a duplicate last Wednesday, so I fixed it last night. Someone was kind enough to message us and let us know. Um, the correct one was posted last night and the new one was posted today. So you have two, two new ones in the past 24 hours. If you're a podcast listener, be sure to go check those out. YouTube was correct the whole time. It was only the audio version that I screwed up on. I'm human and that sucks. Um, Candy Thunder's podcast round two is being filmed this week. So if you have questions you want us to answer, be sure to go post those on the Dusty Thunder subreddit. Brenny, thank you so much for subscribing for the first time, becoming a member of the Storm. Glad to have you. All of you new Storm members will have a link uh, for the VIP group on Facebook sent to you um, after the live. It'll probably be later tonight since we have the Thunder Kiddo thing going on. Uh, also, we have some fiction stories in the works for the YouTube and podcast content that's going to be like a chill out to this playlist or a fall asleep to this playlist. It won't be part of the normal content that we do, uh, but I'm excited about that. And I'm using some some AI writing to actually help facilitate that and get it to happen faster. So very cool uh, at dusty dash thunder dot com. We still have sticker packs available. We have a sticker sheet and two different sticker packs. You definitely need to go check those out. I'm excited for them to get in. They should be in here soon for me to actually show you once we have those um and at dustythunderswag.com if you hadn't heard yet but you saw the posts over the last few days we have a protect the cake shirt now 
It is on DustyThunderSwag.com as of like an hour before the stream. And the code friends and fans 25 that's friends ampersand fans 25 you can use through April 17th to save 25%. So, heck yeah. Also, something we're looking at right now, um, I don't know if, how familiar with branded bills you guys are, but we're looking at the possibility of doing a a batch of, of hats um, and potentially hoodies through branded bills. So if that's something that you guys would be interested in, let me know. Obviously, if you're interested in it, we're much more likely to do it. I really just want, I wear branded bills hats all the time. I really want one that has the Dusty Thunder logo on it. So I hope you guys like it too, because that means that I can get one. Heck yeah. Uh, Somebody asked about where to listen to the podcast. My best suggestion here, Dina, thank you so much for subscribing and becoming a member of the storm. Glad to have you. And Dustin, Dustin with an A, subscribing. Glad to have you as a member of the storm. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you want to get engaged in the podcast, use Linktree. It's linked in our bio on every social media outlet that we have. Um, and it will have a little podcast drop down where you can see all the different platforms that we're on. Spotify is, of course, the most common. It's like 70, 70% of the people who engage in our podcast do it on, on Spotify. And we actually just moved our podcast over to Megaphone, which is Spotify for broadcasters. Podcasters, sorry. Need some golf gear, Leanne. There you go. The branded Bills hats um, are the performance line. So they're they're um, water, I, I don't know if they're waterproof or water resistant, but they're very comfortable. I have almost every different kind of branded Bills hat, and this is the preferred one because of the comfort for it. It's very, very nice. Very fancy. Uh, Al, thank you so much for the hot air balloon. Appreciate that. Crazy Canadian for the worsties. Everybody throwing wieners at me here. Uh, Crash Cart Ronnie says, would you like us to submit pictures of us wearing your swag? Hell yes, I would. Please do that. Absolutely do that. And if, uh, if you follow on Insta, post and tag us there, that would probably be the easiest way to do it. But if you want to send it in on our form, you probably have to send a link. I don't know if you can upload images, but... Uh, crazy Canadian for the taco and the worsties. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. Uh, Geraldine in Scotland. Good to see you. <laughs> Kristen baking a strawberry cream cake because of y'all. Heck yeah. Ash says we're almost at 120K. Heck yeah. Dustin with an A is in Idaho. Nice. Sea turtle lover says my voice is mesmerizing. Thank you. Um, I wish it worked on Candy Thunder. To mesmerize her sometimes because it would be the ultimate distraction tool. Like if I ever pissed her off, if I could just start talking in a certain tone or say a specific set of words and, and it just you know, like a zebra's stripes or like a peacock's feathers just kind of made all that go away. Don't work like that. Unfortunately. Sorry. All right. I'm going to try to find my place for our stories down here. Figure out where we left off. Oh, it was the brother-in-law and the gender reveal. That was our last one. Don't forget those sticker packs. The sticker packs we've made as affordable as possible and at dusty-thunder.com. I think I might actually have... I might actually have uh, have one to show you here. Let me see if I can, if I can uh, figure it out. No, I think I took it off, but there is something that I can do. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, real quick. We'll do this real quick, and then we'll dive into the next story here, okay? All right, uh, so this is the new Dusty Thunder website, if you haven't seen this yet. It's super cool. Um, <laughs> and I just saw the, the bubble post there. Uh, over to shop. These are the stickers that are available right now. Uh, the sticker sheet is 16 bucks, and the other two sticker bundles are $10. Bucks. Um, you should definitely go get one of those. We're supposed to get them in here soon. We're going to start shipping them out on like the 27th of April, I think. But um, I'm going to be putting these on everything. Everything. And, uh, you know, you should get, if you get this middle one sticker bundle too, and you have that Ask On One, just plan it. Or even three where it says Ask On One, you're a terrible human. You might want to order like 100 of those. So that way you can put them on the bumpers of, of cars for people who park badly. Um, or, you know, just people that you dislike in general, just like hide that sticker somewhere in plain view to warn the others that they're a terrible human. That would be a good idea. Don't have to buy some sheet magnet. 
Ooh. Magnets. Magnets would be a damn good idea. Dawn says we're uh, four subs away from hitting our goal. Heck yeah. You guys are awesome. You guys are incredible. Dusty told me to. <laughs> uh, working mom is in Nebraska. Tomahawk's up. Heck yeah. Good to see you here. Jen me meow with the cat paws. Completely surprising with your name like that. That cat paws would be coming my way. Thank you so much. Uh, VB, thank you for the lightning bolts. Appreciate that. Samantha, thank you for the panda backing up a little bit now. And uh, Samantha for the lightning bolt there as well. Dawn with the tiny diny. <laughs> Kelly with the lightning bolts. Thank you so much. Jennifer with the Rosa. Thank you. All right. We're going to go ahead and dive into the next one here. 430. We got 30 minutes to go here. Mary, thank you for the chill. Appreciate that. I do need to chill. Jamie Brady subscribing for the first time and becoming a member of the storm and getting us that much closer to that 150 mark. You guys are cool. All right. This one is from the am I the asshole or I'm sorry, AITA subreddit. And it is, am I the astronaut for not giving my fiance's daughter money when I won the lottery? I, 35 female, am engaged to my fiance, Brian, 37 male. We've been together for two years. He has a daughter, Ashley, 14, from a previous relationship. I'm currently pregnant with our daughter. I like to play the lottery sometimes, usually just scratch tickets. This time, I won $50,000. Nice. Congrats. Of course, I was very excited. I decided to take the money and put it away for my future child's future. Future child's future. Got it. I told Brian about the money and that it was being put away for our baby's future. He He said we should take some of the money for Ashley since she's going to be graduating high school in a few years. Brian and his ex do have a college fund set up for Ashley, but not enough for all of it. I let him know this money would be be would be being used for our child since it was won by me and I'd be the one paying taxes on it since we're not married yet. I let him know once the baby was born, it would go into a trust and that no one had access to it. Brian and Ashley think I'm being ridiculous since the unborn baby would have more money than her set aside already and that it's unfair. I explained I understood how they felt, but I think I'm doing the right thing. Now my mother-in-law is also pressuring me because Ashley went to her house feeling upset saying the baby is getting preferred treatment already. Am I the asshole? Edit. I see a lot of people asking how Ashley knows about the money. She walked into the house while we were talking about it and overheard our conversation. We didn't hear her come inside. Ashley then thought this meant we won the money as in her father and I since we were engaged. Oh. Ah. Ah. I'm going to panic moonwalk out of this one. What would you do? What would you do if you were engaged and you won $50,000? Don resubbing to become a uh, continue as a member of the storm for month two. Thank you so much. Good to see you in the group there. I'm sorry, but no, her child not married. No, her choice. Her child not married. No, her choice. Yeah, it is her choice. But, okay, so Melissa Riffle has, her take on this is engaged equals our money. So, is it married our money or is it engaged our money? And I'm not talking about the legality. I'm talking about, I'm talking about what's the right thing to do. Why would you give a 14-year-old money? They're talking about college fund stuff. My money, my choice. That needs to be a shirt. Annoying situation to be in, though. That would be. Married equals our money for sure. Well, some people, some people keep all of that separate too. Um, This is tough though. Okay. Dustin with an A says, as a mother of seven, nah, maybe her, maybe her choose a small gift she would like, but share it all. I, okay. So here's, here's where my brain is at. If, OP wants to have a bonus mom, bonus child relationship with her fiance's daughter, then she should be more inclined to do something for her and treat her as her own. Not doing that. Well, she doesn't have any obligation to do that. Not doing it creates a clear divide. 
And it says to the daughter and to her fiance and to her fiance's ex that I have no intention of treating her like my own. And that to me sucks because when you have blended families, blended families are already tough enough. We've talked about imbalance with blended families. If you permit, if you present an immediate imbalance here, then it's Ashley. Who's the 14 year old is always going to feel less than this could lead to her not wanting to go see her dad because she's going to be in an environment where she feels less than it feels like the right thing to do would be to try to, to treat them equally blended families are tough and I understand OP's position here, but it all depends on what, what environment she's wanting to create, what kind of relationship she's wanting to have with OP's daughter. This could be damaging to her relationship with her fiance because her fiance has to think about, wow, you know, we are engaged. You know, if, if this had been a few months later when we were married, it would be our money. And then, then it would, I would be involved in this decision, or at least I would like to think to, but now he's got to think if this happens, am I not going to get to see my daughter as much because she doesn't want to come over here because she feels less than she feels the imbalance. She already knows it's there, but that could prevent her from coming over and could harm their relationship. But she already has a college fund from her mother. I don't think that matters. It's it's are you going to treat them as equals or not? And again, OP doesn't have an obligation to do that. There's never an obligation to do that. But choices have consequences. And if the choice she makes is an imbalanced one, then she's going to communicate that to Ashley. And maybe maybe OP is okay with that. And maybe maybe that's that's acceptable to her. But it is going to have consequences, and it's going to have consequences that trickle over to Brian, her fiance, and he has to think about his relationship with his daughter too. This could, this could cascade outward. Kel, Kel says Ashley uh, already say that she feels less less than in comparison to the unborn baby because of this. Correct. If they were married, it would still be her money, Isla says. Um, Yeah, and a lot of people treat it like that, where it's, you know, people still have separate finances. Sammy Shepard subscribing and becoming a member of the Storm for the first time. Excellent. Thank you so much. There was another one that I thought I missed up here a minute ago. Yeah, Robin Hazen becoming a member of the Storm as well. We're at 149. Holy moly. You guys are stinking crazy, and I love it. I love it. I think it was working mom. It was, it was not giving the child money. I think it was about putting it aside for, uh, for college. He said, we should take some of the money for Ashley since she's going to be graduating high school in a few years. So they're talking about setting it aside for college. I think Gabriel subscribing and getting us to 150. Holy crap. We're at 150 guys. I think I have some confetti here somewhere. I might've changed it, but we're going to do it to celebrate. Anyway, we're celebrating 150 right now. You guys are awesome. We're flying around here, flying through the ASCON universe, celebrating getting to 150 here. Thank you guys so much. This is a new animation made today. Thank you guys. Y'all are crazy cool. Hundred and fifty subs. Man, we've got a lot of VIP invites to send out here. Heck yeah. I, so back to this story, I don't think that well, classic anime queen subscribing and becoming a member of the of the storm as well. We're at 151. Holy cow. Y'all are just too cool. Too kind. Gloria, thank you so much for the lightning bolts. Appreciate that. 46 of them. Oy, three parents versus two. Um, The baby will have 18 to 20 years for the money to earn interest. Agreed. I mean, there, there's a lot to consider here, but I think regardless of obligation and regardless of where the money is going, it, it doesn't, it doesn't even have to be an equal amount of money. And I think that's the, that's the important part to consider here. She, she could take a small piece of it, even just a symbolic piece and set it aside and take that small piece. And the consideration there is that she already has a college fund. Whereas you know, new baby has nothing set up yet. And it's, it's up to OP and OP's fiance to do that. She doesn't have the third parent involved to have that other fund set up. So it would be a smaller amount that was set aside for Ashley, but not nothing. And I think you can do that and recognize the blended family and try 
try to set up a little bit of, of equality here. It's not an obligation again, but if she wants to, if she wants to have that relationship with Ashley, like she's treating her like her own, which I think is the right thing to do when you have a blended family. I think if that's, that's the thing that, that creates the best camaraderie that you want with that. It's, it's not always possible, but in this case, I don't think it would be that difficult. You know, if she found out how much Ashley has stashed in her college fund right now, comparing that to what she has, which is assuming the majority of 50 K for, for new baby um, and could figure out what she needed to supplement to Ashley's fund to get them to the same amount in there. New baby still going to have more because of that time where interest is going to accumulate. Not an obligation. I'm not going to put her on the ask on scale for it, but I think that there's, there is a different way. Donna, thank you so much for the lightning bolts. Allie, thank you so much for the rose. Appreciate that. And for the TikTok, Thank you. And the rose again. It's not a money thing. It's a love thing. Sparkle shine says that's where I'm at. It's not an obligation, but choices have consequences for every action. You know, the rest classic anime queen. Thank you so much for the roses. Catherine S. Thank you for the lightning bolts. Appreciate that. All right, it is 441. We've got a couple stories to go here, so I'm going to dive right into them. This is a follower submission again. OP, if you are out there in chat, give us a shout and let us know, okay? This one is, am I the astronaut for hanging out with my friends? Am I the astronaut for hanging out with my friends? My wife and I have been married for six years together for eight. We have two children, ages four and two. My wife and I work full time and our two toddlers keep us very busy. No doubt. Needless to say, like most parents, free time is few and far between. No doubt. The issue is my wife's friends do not live near us and are very scattered. The closest one being six hours away. While my wife lives 30 minutes or closer. While my friends live 30 minutes or closer. Sorry, misread that. Because of this, she doesn't get to see her friends very often. Most times it's maybe once or twice a year. And because of the distance, it has to be very planned out. I feel bad that she doesn't get to see her friends as much. However, I can't control the distance factor. She often gets annoyed whenever I bring up hanging out with my friends. She doesn't have much in common with them. However, they always welcome her anytime they see her and often try to include her as well as our other friends, significant others. The last time I hung out with them, they asked if I might want to do something the following weekend, to which my wife caught me alone and said, are you really going to see them two weeks in a row in a very annoyed tone? She said she thought that was kind of selfish of them to ask. I told her I don't really think that much of it and had actually planned to say no so that I could spend some time with her and the kids. However, she made me feel like an asshole for even considering it. Am I the asshole here? Wah! Okay, 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 okay. I feel like I read the words, but I didn't really absorb everything here. So let me go back and backtrack just a little bit. They have two kids. Four and two. They both work full time. Have very little free time. Her friends live further away. His friends live closer. So he gets to see his friends more, which she's annoyed by. Is he the asshole for considering hanging out with his friends? Because she made him feel like an asshole. So he's wanting to know, am I an asshole for for wanting to hang out with my friends two weekends in a row? Susie, I'm glad you caught live again. Dessa, thank you for the uh, compliments on the blended family dynamics. We've got some practice in that department. Haley, thank you so much for the love. You appreciate that. When did being a good bonus mom include only giving them money? Uh, I don't think anyone ever said that it was only giving them money. Stacy. Um, but I think, you know, <laughs> When you get to monetary stuff, it's black and white. You know what I mean? It's it's easy to it's easy to backtrack. It's easy for people to look at and say, "Oh, that's imbalanced." Stephanie, thank you for the gamer cat. Appreciate that. Haley, for the love you, thank you that oh, I am. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm way behind down here. Creepy, thank you for the garland headpiece. Appreciate that. Were you trying to tell me something? No. Okay, I thought I, I thought I saw Tony Spark leaning over. Now that I got this monitor in the way of his face, I have to I have to. 
lean over to see if he's trying to tell me something. If OP had an extra few seconds, he would have said no in favor of the wife. Yeah, but but considering it, does that make him an asshole? Nightwind, thank you so much. Appreciate that. They're engaged. They aren't just dating. Oh. These two are married. Been married for six years. So is it, it, I guess it comes down to, is she pissed because she's jealous because she doesn't get to see her friends as much? Or is it that she is pissed because she thinks he needs to be allocating more time to the family? And I guess that's, it's Pandora's box here because... If it's because she feels like he needs to allocate more time to family, then we have to examine, is he choosing me time too often to the detriment of his family? Because you have to choose me time enough to keep yourself from going crazy, but not so much that you're, that you're sacrificing quality time. There's a fine line to walk there. Uh, but but it, the way he's making the sound is that it's not about that at all. It's about his friends being closer and her being annoyed because his friends are closer. So maybe... Maybe there needs to be some kind of balance here where where OP actually makes the effort to say, hey, why don't we take this day and go hang out with your friends? Or why don't you set this day aside so that you can go see your friends and I've got the kids? Maybe something like that would help remedy this. I don't feel like I don't feel like you're the asshole OP for for considering hanging out with your friends. I mean, you excuse me. Sorry, that was gross. Um you already feel some kind of immense guilt. It look, it sounds like from from hanging out with them just one time, even though even though you brought her along because you know that she doesn't enjoy it um, as much as she does hanging out with her friends, and that's a tough situation to be in, I imagine. But you're you're not the asshole for wanting to hang out with your friends, for wanting to have that that social engagement. I do think that there is a way to provide a more balanced structure here, where if it is because she's jealous because her friends are further away, you can remedy that simply by suggesting that she go see them on X day once a month or whatever it is and saying, I got the kids go do you time. Because right now it sounds like the time you have with your friends, even if she's with you is you time. It is not her time. That is not, that is not replenishing for her. That is not filling up her cup because if she's not friends with your friends in the way that you are, it's a chore to her. And she may be trying. She may be trying to make it work and to like them and to like hanging out. But I guarantee you, every time she's there, she's like, I would much rather be hanging out with my friends. And if she doesn't get me time, she's going to get fully depleted. And that's when you lose a filter. That's when you start saying shit that you don't mean. That's when you start lashing out. That's when you start having less passion for life. That's when a lot of shit goes sideways. So I feel like you have an obligation here to head that off. Maybe not an obligation, but you have the power to head that off by simply saying Take this one day this month and fill up your cup, whatever that is. Go on to see your friends. Like it's, I understand it's a logistical pain in the ass, which is why you got to plan it ahead of time. And if it is the, if that is the, the big problem here, where that's making her, what's the word I'm looking for? If that's making her resent the time that you get with your friends, then this should solve that problem. If it is a, you need to choose family time more, then. That's a different situation. But the way that it seems right here is that it's an imbalance because her friends are further away, but I think you can help remedy that. I think so. Why can't she make local friends, Paula Smith says. Ah, That's a good point. Um, Unfortunately, we can't control that from our end. And unfortunately for OP here, if he said something like that, he'd probably get kicked in the balls Um, or slapped or something like that. He'd definitely get a, a... a firm stare tiptoeing into the glare department. You know what I'm talking about. I think my point is that if there's a problem that he has the ability to influence the solution to, why wouldn't you? And this is a follower submission again. So OP may be here. Um, It's worth a shot. It's worth a shot to say, Hey, why don't we take, why don't you plan this day to go see your friends and uh, and maybe that helps her fill up her cup. I think 
trying to talk your significant other into making new friends seems like a very dangerous and difficult task. That's something that seems like you would have to do that kind of thing together. And if she's not into the significant others of your friends, you've kind of tried to do that already. If you know that her friend time would fill up her cup, then start there. Work on the new friends later. Miriam's wellspring. Uh, Sending cake my way. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Clearly, I need lots of it. She might find someone else, Hoodie. I don't know. I don't know. It is hard to make friends. Um, Nikki says, especially as a mom. Yeah, making adult friends is difficult. If it's just about friends, she needs to make some. Man, I don't know. Especially today. I don't know. Okay, so... So today in 2023, the world is our oyster and you can get into whatever niche shit you want to get into in online communities. Local stuff is different, right? It's, you know, you can be, you can be into a very specific thing online, but locally it's, you're not as likely to share those interests with people. That doesn't mean you can't have local friends, but, but it's just, it's, I think, (laughs) technology getting to where it's gotten to and allowing us to have those niched interests is is great and bad at the same time because that that physical presence becomes much more difficult you're un, you're much less likely to have people who have your specific interests in common with you physically present than you do with an online community okay vita you got a good point there the meetup app so it, that's if she's willing to make a concerted interest i'm sh- or a concerted effort toward that uh, but again, that's that's going to be a hard thing for OP here, who's the husband, to talk her into. Can you imagine talking to your spouse and being like, baby, I think you need to make some friends. How about you try this meetup app? Talk about the glare. I feel like I feel like that would be. That would be tough. Dustin with an A <laughs> talking about introverts unite. That's Candy Thunder and I. I mean, I know it doesn't seem like it right now. I tell her I'm an introvert who knows how to pretend to be an extrovert. Um, and she's just a pure introvert. Mum groups, maybe, maybe a way to branch out into that. But man, I really feel like if the problem is her cup isn't filled and you know what will fill it, just start with one time saying, take this time, take this day, set it aside. I will handle whatever I need to handle so that you can fill up your cup. That's it. Beyond that, yeah, it's a long-term issue, but give her the chance to fill it up once and see how long that lasts. And then you can start building out a different strategy for there. (laughs) Avoid mom groups. It's chaos in them, but your name is Chaos Incarnate. You're there. I look like I need some lemon cake. Hell no. Don't you say them words in front of me? Type them words in front of me. (laughs) <laughs> Bets Lou says I'm an introvert with a PhD in masking. There you go. There you go. As long as you know how to make it work for you. That's all that matters. All right, 453. I've got time to get through one more story here. We can do this. We can do it. All right. This one is from the AITA subreddit, and it is Am I the Astronaut for turning off the Wi-Fi at night? I am a sleep deprived. Wow. Me too. I am a sleep deprived 23 year. It's a good thing. It's the last story. My brain shutting down. I am a sleep deprived 23 male. My older brother, 26 male. His room is right next to mine. I have a job where I have to wake up at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. Monday through Friday. And I also need good sleep to make progress in the gym. My brother plays video games in the middle of the night at like 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. and constantly wakes me up because he's screaming into his headset with his dumb friend, his dumb friends, and has the game volume on too loud. I respectively told him at least 50 times, not kidding here, to lower his volume down and stop screaming into his headset. He says he will stop, but he still wakes me up multiple times a week with his screaming and game volume. My parents really don't want to really don't want me to move out. 
but I'm getting so tired of dealing with this. They don't have a room near him, so they don't have to experience what I do. I need sleep, and he's too much of a man-child to be considerate. I'm really struggling, struggling getting through the workday and going to the gym feels like a waste of time because I can't get enough sleep. Will I be the asshole if I started turning off the Wi-Fi every night at 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. or 7 a.m.? I don't think it would affect my parents at all because they actually act like adults and sleep at a sensible time. Edit, the router is in my room. I have the... I have a lock on my door and my parents agree with me. Okay. 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 So the whole parents agree with me part is important here. <laughs> OP is 23 and his brother is 26. Uh, now let me clarify. I'm a gamer and, uh, and you know, there's, there's a group that I like playing call of duty with Caldera, not Warzone two. Um, and I'll play a lot of Hogwarts lately, but um, I'm still trying to be at least considerate, even if I'm mic'd up. You know, I'm trying to be considerate and not talk loud. You don't have to scream whenever you game, so there should be con- some consideration there. Uh, but if the parents agree, and it's their house, and they say that you can shut it down, go for it. Um, I would highly suggest communicating this with your older brother ahead of time. And just saying, hey, uh, for everyone's sake, internet is getting shut off, which is which is very much a um, putting my foot down dad move. And OP's twenty three, and his brother's twenty six. He's the younger brother trying to pull a foot down dad move on his older brother who is gaming in the middle of the night. Um, I mean, my gut here says, move out, dude, move out. Then you can you can control this in any way that you want. Um, and there are also like sound machines. There are noise canceling headphones that you could sleep in and use. Uh, there's sound dampening panels that you could get there. There are some things that you could do if you're not ready to move out. Uh, but just be aware that if you do move out and you move into an apartment or duplex or anything like that, or houses that are close together, chances are, you're still going to have some noisy neighbors and you're not going to be able to turn the Wi-Fi off on them. So it's either you figure out a way to deal with this without interfering with other people's lives or imposing your will on them. Um, or you move out. That's where I'm at. I mean, if the brother is okay with not gaming, cool, turn the Wi-Fi off. I feel like he's going to have an opinion on it. Uh, and really probably should both move out 23 and 26, but, um, he doesn't have a problem with it. You do. And I know your parents don't want you to move out, but this is a damn good reason to, I don't know. What do you guys think here? Nikki says, really, you can play late without being loud. That's just rude. Yeah. I mean, he, you wish he could control it. And maybe, maybe he doesn't realize how loud he's being. And a lot of people get crazy, crazy worked up and are just, just yell because of all the excitement of gaming. And maybe you uh, make a recording of how loud it sounds in your room from where he's at so that he understands better. And maybe he will, Maybe he will make some concessions to be quieter. I doubt it, but it's possible. Rent is expensive out there. You're right. So, and that's where we get to, uh, Jim, and like you're saying, um, soundproofing. And you're not going to soundproof it because soundproofing is a multi-phase process that is incredibly expensive and in, involves part of the construction, like insulation and studs and that kind of thing. Um, but you could sound dampen. You could, you could put some sound dampening on there. Um, or, or the sound, sound isolating earphones. Headphones are a a good idea and work really well. If you can get comfortable live or sleeping in them, um, noise machines can drown it out. There are a lot of, there are a lot of options. There are a lot of options here that don't involve turning off the Wi-Fi and moving out. And if you're not ready to move out, you might give those a shot. Um, parents were okay. Parents were okay with turning off the Wi-Fi, and I think because of that, uh, sure, go for it. I would just highly communicate, communi- communicate. I would highly advise or suggest communicating it ahead of time. Otherwise, you're gonna get woke up, and it's gonna be him beating your door down because his squad is waiting for him online. Ah, uh, brother needs a headphone without or with mic. I think it's what he's using. 
Adele, hey there in South Africa. Uh, okay, I have to wrap it up here, guys, because I have to uh, get home for our Thunder Kiddo thing tonight, which is why we're we're earlier on here. Real quick reminder, we have those sticker packs available at dusty-thunder.com. You can use the code friends and fans 20 friends and fans 25 at dusty thunder swag.com where we have the new protect the cake t-shirt and thank you so much for subscribing and becoming a member of the storm thank you you guys we eclipsed that 150 mark today you guys are incredible thank you so much and candy thunders podcast is being filmed tomorrow thursday so if you have questions you want us to address in that podcast be sure you post it on the dusty thunder subreddit of course you can fill it out on the form on the website too and send it that way but thank you guys so much thank you for being here we had a wonderful live today uh maybe we need to start a little bit earlier next time let me know what you think about that heck yeah i will uh i'll see you very soon thanks guys